Ladies and gents, today we're talking about the top five beginner mistake to avoid. I've been trading for about five years at this point, and I still do most of these mistakes when I'm trading on a bad day, but overall, I'm still doing better than when I'm starting. So this video is going to be about helping you not do these mistakes so you can keep more of your money. As usual, I'll link all the best tools for day trading in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get right in. So mistake number one. So the first thing I see commonly do by newbies is that they try to mean revert news. So this means taking the opposite side of a positive or negative news. For example, a positive news happens and the stock moves up or gaps up in the pre-market and then decides to move up on the open. What they tend to do is try to short the stock or even the same thing for a stock that is gapping down. So the stock has negative news, then it goes down and then they try to buy the stock as it goes down because they think it's going to bounce back. When news happen on a stock, things change drastically and a lot of players have to make decisions. So the best thing to do is normally to follow the momentum and just avoid having a headache by trying to gauge if this news is up too much or this news is down too much because realistically, we don't know until the move is completely done. And then we can go hindsight and see, oh, this was an obvious buy. This was an obvious sell. But when it happens in real time, a lot of people have to make decisions and there's often a lot of panic on both sides. So it's very hard to find the top or the bottom. And if you want to avoid losing a lot of money on small trade or trade that you thought were going to be easy at first, just go with the momentum much easier and your drawdown is going to be significantly less than when you're trying to mean revert, especially if you have a small account. So follow the trend is going to be the number one tip. So tip number two is going to be to building or tracking a strategy without news. We're going to talk about news a lot in this video because a lot of newbie don't actually look at the news when they're trading a stock, which is the fundamental thing that you have to do first. You have to see the news and then you can look at what the move is so you understand the bigger picture and context. What's going to happen is a lot of people are going to be finding what they want to see. So you look at a bunch of charts at the end of the day and you see this was an easy breakout. This was an easy short. This was an easy this. This was an easy that. And you start collecting a database without news. So when the next setup or the next stock happened that looks quite similar, it's going to set up in a way that you think it will. There's going to be a massive difference because sometimes if something is breaking out and also having continuation, so it makes one leg higher, consolidate and makes maybe the next move. It's because a lot of people are actually interested in this stock and there's news behind it. If you're trying to trade strategy without news, the same setup could be very different. Stock goes up, goes sideways, and then, you know, fell to break out and then just sells off at the end of the day because nobody really care about this stock. So when you're building a plan, building a strategy, it's super important that you track the news behind it. If you don't, I can guarantee you that you're going to be wasting your time and also losing money in the long term because you are missing a key variable of what it needs to be a profitable trader is understanding context. By the way, if you enjoyed the video so far, don't forget to like, subscribe. I also did link all the best tools for trading in the description. Let's get back to the video. Tip number three. This is going to be sticking with one strategy. When you're on YouTube, you see all these gurus just saying you buy support and you short resistance, so on and so forth. But the reality is that it's not always the case and things don't exactly work like this in the market. Sometimes there's a lot of panic because news just hit like the CPI or the, some other macro news like the war, and then things are going to sell off or break down. This is not going to be the time to short a resistance because there's new opportunity, there's new money, people had to make a decision. So most likely there's going to be continuation. This is just an example. But overall, what I'm trying to say here is that often the market change and the condition change. So your strategy should be adapting to what's going on in reality versus just being stubborn and sticky with one strategy that might be underperforming. Maybe sometime the big strategy is going to be to short some mega cap that went up way too much like we just had on Tesla. Or sometime it's going to be just to buy breakout on earnings because this is what's really hot and earnings are really hot. And this was a good example when AI was just starting out and everything was going higher. So this is very important, but a lot of traders or a lot of noob just say, oh, this is not my strategy. I'm not going to trade it. When is the biggest opportunity of the year? 
or of the month. And they could have doubled their PL for that year just by being open minded and being willing to explore new strategy. But keep in mind, when you're trying something new, you have to trade it smaller because you don't know it yet how it's going to feel when you're going to be in that trade. So be responsible, try new stuff out, but with little position. I know even some trader that trades a couple shares on some stock, not even a couple hundred, a couple shares when it's a new strategy, just to get a feel for it and sometimes just to collect data. So they have a bucket list of what they can trade when the market condition aligns. So tip number four, this is going to be not trading free market or not trading post market. What you're being told by your trading guru is that trading pre-market and post-market is dangerous. But in reality, it's just like trading any other time during the day. You just have to understand the condition that you're trading in. If you're going to trade pre-market, just find something that's very liquid that is going to move. So I like to trade pre-market, but I only trade a certain set of pre-market. I'm going to trade breaking news to the long side on small cap because I think there's great edge in this area. Or I'm going to say trade breaking news to the short side because there's going to be a lot of liquidity and things happening. And also I do trade earning release, which I think is a great scalp if you can be at your desk for a long period of time and you can just be there for a couple hours. You can just sit there and look at the earnings, what's happening and find some great momentum. These all happens in the post and pre-market. And surprisingly, it's one of the best area where I have the most edge in my trading compared to the regular trading hour where I churn a lot of shares because things are harder and there's more robots during the day or algo as you like to call it. It's just harder. When you're trading pre market, you just have to be smart about liquidity. This is where things can get dangerous is that if you're being stupid with just trading stuff that don't have enough liquidity, the spread can get wider. But honestly, trading pre and post market could be really good if you build a strategy around it. And I also think that a lot of newer traders that do work a full-time job and can be there during the day can definitely trade the pre-market and find some kind of edge that they can really grow until they can quit their job if they want to, of course. So tip number five. When I speak to newer traders, they all tell me that they're getting in the market to short small cap when in reality, it's probably the worst strategy that you can try if you're new. I'll give you a couple reasons. First, you have borrow fees and commission are already enough. So when you're paying borrow on every stock that you trade, even if you think that it's only 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, when things are moving, you're going to start to see that it really adds up at the end of the month. Somebody that's more focused on the long side is going to look at his commission and see maybe he's going to pay 15 to 20 percent of commission on his whole profit versus someone that's shorting that's going to pay about 50 to 60 percent in commission and borrow fees. So when you have a not great month or you have a bad month, you're normally down almost double your P&L. You're going to be down 10,000 and then 5,000 of borrow fees, which is just crazy and it adds up. And also you have the other variable of trader that just look at Excel and say, oh, I found an edge over the weekend in Excel. And they don't really think that if they were able to find an edge in the market in Excel in a weekend, there's smarter guys out there that have been trading for 10 years or even market makers that are getting paid millions a year that already know what you're looking at. And they counter this edge by trading against you. And it's a micro cap. A 10, 15 million dollar company, you don't think there's some guy that can just buy the whole float and kick you out of your position once they desire. So this strategy just ends up being that you bet that this guy is going to sell and you're going to piggyback is selling. Honestly, if you're newer, you want to find something you have more edge or more opportunity and definitely look at the long side to just protect your account in the long run. 